بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of 40 hadith and this is our second session on hadith 31 hadith 31 as you remember is about our uh, incompetence in knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet and Imams. So in this uh, part, one heading is about the fact that we cannot know the reality of Allah's names and attributes. Haqiqat asma wa sifat. Before I explain this, I should uh, make a quick point. That is about reality in contrast to concept of something. You know, for example, we have mafhumul wujud and we have haqiqatul wujud. The concept of existence is something that we can easily understand. But reality of existence is something that needs another way of uh, knowledge and another way of understanding. For example, uh, if I can, through uh, you know, self-reflection, focus on my own existence as a kind of knowledge by presence, they can, I can understand reality of my existence, which is very much different from what we say about you know, I exist, which is and through concepts or for example about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence we can never grasp the reality of his existence we can have something about the concept of his existence the concept of wajibul wujud what, what is haqiqatu wajibul wujud what is haqiqatu zatullah uh, we cannot understand so there are two things. One is mafhum, one is haqiqa. So haqiqa here doesn't mean truth. Haqiqa here means reality of something, the external objective reality of something. Okay, after explaining this point, initial point now, let's go back to the book. Uh, he says, knowledge about the reality of the names and attributes is not possible means names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says idraq haqiqat awsaf haq what is the reality of knowledge of god what is the reality of will of god life of god power of god what's the reality of that و احاطه بر آنها و کیفیت آنها and to encompass them with our understanding to fully grasp them and their quality he says this is something that neither through burhan philosophers can achieve nor through mysticism or can achieve the reality of the qualities of God and fully grasping them. And he says what philosophers through decisive arguments, which we call Burhan demonstration, have reached, and what mystics have said about names and attributes of Allah through their proper methodology, they are both acceptable but they are talking about concepts 
They give us knowledge of names of God, knowledge of attributes of God. They cannot communicate to us the reality of that. These are two different things. You know, I can sometimes talk about love, but it doesn't mean that you have experienced love. I can talk about love for Allah hours, but it doesn't mean that you would start experiencing that. Sometimes, maybe, not through concepts, but through my own spirit and reality, maybe I am able to enlighten uh, love for Allah and ignite it or light for uh, you know for uh, uh, nearness to Allah in someone's heart that's another thing but just giving information is not enough and he says these points that philosophers and mystics have said can be correct not everything that they said, but those things that they have said through Burhan and through proper methodology, they are correct. They are Sahih wa Burhani. They are correct and they are demonstrated. But uh, still it's knowledge. And he says, Elm khud elm hijabist ghaliz. Knowledge by itself is a thick veil. Please pay attention to this point. When we say knowledge is hijab or in some expressions we say al ilmu huwa al hijab al akbar knowledge is the greatest veil this doesn't mean that knowledge is bad unfortunately some people don't understand this they think that knowledge is bad no no it means that in my humble understanding and i think what imam khomeini says here also is compatible with that it means that for some people who just talk and you know discuss a scientific issue a scholarly issues without really thinking about the you know experience of course for them hijab has another meaning meaning that they have become too much preoccupied with, with the discussions and disciplines and you know lectures and I don't know courses and certificates and books and etc recognition and by others yes maybe for some people knowledge has become an idol maybe it has become an obstacle but, but we are not talking about them only I think in my humble understanding when we say al ilmu wal hijab al akbar it means something else or at least something more and that is when we want to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala up to certain limits we go through concepts and therefore we need to improve our knowledge but then we reach a point that we need to now penetrate through this knowledge into a sense of God and reality of his names and qualities to be able to penetrate to be able to cross knowledge is very very difficult not because knowledge is bad because there is a big difference between concept of something and reality of something we can talk about nearness to Allah al -qurb. but to be near and to understand through experience and to witness nearness is something else this is one of the biggest if not the biggest shifts that we have to make in our life but the key for success is first to make sure that you have this knowledge <laughs> not that you say al -almuhu wa al -al -akbar, so it's better not to learn no this is absolutely wrong y you need to learn but you need to understand that this is not end of the story you should not be pleased with this you know like for example uh, you may read many books about friendship 
you may master, I don't know, these books. But this doesn't mean that you have become friend with anyone and you will have good friends necessarily. You have to go beyond concepts and experience that. So he says, Knowledge itself is a thick whale. on Kharq means to penetrate. Uh, you know, we have in Munajat Shabani Hatta Tahruqa Absar al Gulub Hojuban Nur. That is from the same root Kharq. So this hijab of knowledge we need to penetrate. And the way to penetrate is dar sayye taqwaye kamil va riyazat shadid va inqita'i tam va munajat sadiqane ba janab rububi there are four things that you need in order to penetrate this whale taqwaye kamil Perfect taqwa. Do all wajibat carefully. Avoid every sin carefully. This is the first step. Riyadhat shadid. We need a strong self-disciplining. In introduction to Islamic mysticism and in namat e we which just uh, finished actually the discussion about the riyadha. Uh, and we explained that riyadha means to train yourself, to discipline yourself. It's very important. And it comes right after irada. So you need riyadha. You need to discipline yourself. You need to have some uh, spiritual exercises and you know, routines for yourself to make sure that you don't you know, uh, lose discipline and you don't go after your desires. Complete and entire detachment from everything and attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ilahi habli kamal al ilayk. He's referring to that. Kamal al And number four, Munajat sadiqane. Honest whispering with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should whisper honestly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask him for help. Having taqwa, having even anqatar ila Allah and riyadha are not enough. We need also to pray. We need to whisper to him. It's amazing how prayer is made so powerful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no matter how hard you work how much knowledge you have how much taqwa you have you have to talk to him and you have to pray to him this conversation between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best thing we can do and other things prepare you to be able to have honest conversation with him. Our salat and dua in general are the best thing we can do, but for someone who is working hard, someone who is pious, not someone who is lazy and does not do anything and just is praying. May Allah inshallah give us tawfiq to work hard and pray inshallah so this hijab it's only possible that we penetrate with these four things and if you do these four things then it's possible that anwar jamal jalal dar qalb salik 
the lights of beauty and glory can start shining in dark. Before these four and before penetrating hijab of knowledge, this Anwar will not shine. But it means that after this they can shine. وَقَلْبِ مُحَاجِرِ إِلَى اللَّهِ The heart of the wayfarer towards Allah before penetration of this into this hijab, no. But after that, can have مُشَاهِدِ قَيْبِيَّ وَحُذُورَ عَيَانِ Can have vision either from, you know, uh, this world through you know vision of the either world or instead of you seeing the other side the other side may manifest itself tajalli you know it's sometimes we go and see the other side sometimes the other side <laughs> uh, manifests to ourselves it's possible after that but not before that before getting rid of this hijab is not possible and then he says so far maybe someone says Imam Khomeini is not very happy with knowledge etc but what he says now confirms that he's not against knowledge and he's actually saying knowledge is necessary it's just not the end of the story این بیان نباید انسان را از طلب و بحث که خود تذکر حق است باز دارد This account, this explanation should not stop human beings from seeking and searching which is by itself a remembrance of the truth because it's rare without seeds of true knowledge with its with their conditions the tree of ma'rifa will be growing and bearing fruits in our heart you cannot bypass knowledge you cannot bypass learning it's very very rare maybe we have cases that uh, there were, for example, people who didn't uh, study. They were very nice people and, you know, pious and with a very little knowledge, not with, without knowledge at all, but without uh, studying, you know, in houses, without uh, studying with great teachers, maybe they achieved something. Sometimes some old people, some people in some villages, uh, you know, like Karbala, Ikazim, for example, maybe they reached certain things. But this is very rare. What is very common is among scholars, among ulama who have learned for the sake of Allah and practiced for the sake of Allah and shared for the sake of Allah and then penetrated that knowledge, they have reached that ma'rafa, which is ma'rafa ghaybi or they had manifestations of that uh, realm. So without seeds of Bedun Badr Ulum Hate Bishara et Mahud Yan Shajari Tayyib Ma'rifat Dargal Ruida Shabbat Ya Barvar Gardad. It's very rare, no, there is rare, very rare that without seeds means without sowing and planting the trees of knowledge you would have something like that pas insan dar avval amr bayad az riyazat ilmiye ba qiyam be jami' shara'it va mutammimat an dast nakshad so in the beginning we should not refrain from a scholarly or scientific, you know, riyadhat, self-disciplining. You have to work hard to learn a lot 
and as they have said al ulum badhrul mushahadat and then he says uh, something which is like a bishara he says agar ulum dar in alam niz be wasite ba'zi mawane be natije tam narasanat insan ra ناچار در عوالم دیگر به سمراتی دلپسند منتهی شود and even these sciences because of some problems would not bear complete fruits in dunya they will give and bear دلپسند pleasant and pleasing fruits in the hereafter If you remember in one of the lectures at least once I have said this maybe more than once but at least I remember once that not only knowledge I believe that every person who embarks on a journey knowledge or a spirituality and makes his or her efforts but before completes this journey the life finishes if he was really struggling and working hard allah will complete for him his journey so if a talab after 4 years 5 years of study dies but in these 4 5 years was really working hard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect him as alam this is my belief and I think what Imam Khomeini says here is one instance of that maybe general principle that Allah will grow us of course if someone has tawfiq to become alam and die as alam then he would be resurrected in a higher position but even a sincere and honest and hard working talabe can become resurrected as all even if someone <coughs> memorizes 40 hadith that they benefit from them in their life Rasulullah said and Sunni and Shia have mentioned that ba'athahullahu yawma al-qiyamata faqihan aliman Allah would resurrect them as faqih and alim so it's not something odd we have about 40 hadith that someone benefits from something like this let alone what I say about embarking on a journey and working hard and uh, sincerely for few years so becoming a scholar you need 20 years for example but after three, four years, someone becomes ill or someone is killed. Inshallah, Allah will resurrect them as faqih, as alim. So, this is about the first point for today. The second point is actually a chapter. And the title of this chapter is that knowledge about the reality of the spirituality of the prophets and awliyaullah cannot be achieved through thinking through fiqh through thinking and contemplation it's not something through arguing and reasoning and studying you can understand the true and real spirituality of prophets and awliyaullah he says, this is the title of the chapter. Then he says, Bidan ke ma'rifat ruhaniyat wa maqam kamal janab khatbi martabat sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi khasatan wa anbiya mu'azzam wa awliya ma'asumin alayhim as-salam niz ba qadam fikr wa sayr afaq wa anfus maysur nagarda. Be informed that knowing the spirituality and the high position 
of the Prophet, in particular, and all Prophets and all infallible awliyaullah, this knowledge cannot be achieved with the foot, with the step of thinking and with journeying into the horizons and the souls. Referring to the ayah sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq. In self-knowledge we mention this ayah. Allah says soon we will show them our signs in the horizon and in themselves, in their souls. We have ayat afaqi, ayat anfusi, signs of Allah which are afaqi, which are external, and those which are internal. Imam Khomeini says by studying these signs of afaqi and anfusi, we cannot understand the true spirituality of the prophets and imams because they have gone beyond this then he says zira ke an buzurgvaran az anwar qaybiye ilahiye va mazahir tamme va ayat bahire jalal u jamal because prophets and awliyaullah who are masoom, they are lights of Allah, created lights, but lights which manifest Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that they call them madhahira tamme, they are complete manifestations. Of course, a manifestation is always manifestation. <laughs> They are not equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Na'uzu billah. If someone thinks that they are equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no, it's impossible. But the best manifestation, the best mirror to reflect the light of Allah is insana kamil, is complete man or as they say, perfect man. There is nothing in this world can can reflect perfection of Allah as much as insan kamil can do. And insan kamil are prophets and imams. So, how can then we know perfect man or complete and perfect manifestation or asma tamiya ilahi, complete names of Allah? through reasoning and you know arguing and through concepts no then he continues he says dar sayr ma'navi wa safar ila allah bi qayatul qusma wa fanay zati wa muntaha al uruj qab qawsayn aw adna rasidan in their spiritual journey, in their journey towards Allah, they have reached the ultimate end. And that is to reach the level of fana. They are no longer existing. Or in my very you know, limited understanding, I understand fana in the sense that they no longer pay attention to themselves. They no longer have any uh, independent understanding of themselves or anything else. They are mindful of Allah and even they are thinking of themselves through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have reached what the Quran says about the Prophet like the distance of two bows of you know the arrow or adna or even nearer in do i not be we say don't know one this is a matter of nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
This is where Jebrail couldn't go beyond. There is the point that Jebrail said, from this point on, I cannot go further. It is said that Jebrail said, if I go even uh, like a you know head of the finger further, I will be burned. But Rasulullah went further up to Qaba Qawsain or Adna. Of course, this was not a physical distance. So, how can then we, from very long distance, <laughs> understand? How can a child understand what does it mean to be father, let alone to understand what does it mean to be grandfather? <laughs> How can a student in the primary school understand what does it mean to be professor? It's impossible. We can talk about it, we can hear about it, but we cannot understand it really unless we reach that point or at least a little below that. So, he says, we cannot understand the reality of the spirituality. And then he makes a distinction, but he doesn't explain. He says, of course, there is a difference between Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and others, other prophets and other awliyaullah, like imams, they have a difference. He doesn't mention further, but in Irfan, you know, normally they say, Prophet had kashf tam haqiqat muhammadiyah so he had complete manifestation and others uh, didn't reach that level that the prophet reached and then he says we can only mention some hadith here we cannot discuss more and he mentions some hadith about Nuraniyat. And he says, but understanding this Nuraniyat, this light aspect of uh, them, needs to be inside enlightened and to have attraction and jazba by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first hadith is in Kafi and Jabir, uh, narrates from Imam Baghir alayhi salam that in response to Jabir's question about ilm al-alim, he says, Sa'altuhu an ilm al-alim. I asked Imam salam about knowledge of alim, the true alim. Faqala li ya Jabir, inna fil anbiya'i wal awsiya'i khamsata arwah. O Jabir, in the Prophets, and their successors, there are five spirits. It says fil anbiya. What is important in this hadith doesn't say ma'al anbiya, with them. It says fil anbiya. In them, there are five spirits. Ruhul Qudus, wa Ruhul Iman, wa Ruhul Hayat. وَرُوحُ الْقُوَّةِ وَرُوحُ الشَّحْوَةِ They have the spirit of sanctity, Holy Spirit. The spirit of Iman, faith, the spirit of life, the spirit of power, the spirit of shahwa, desires. فَبِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ يَا جَابِرْ عَرَفُوا مَا تَحْتَ الْعَرْشِ إِلَى مَا تَحْتَ الثَّرَى Among these five the most important is Ruhul Qudus. And with Ruhul Qudus, O Jabir, they understood whatever is under Arsh, up to skies, and then Tahtathara, under a sky, means earth. So when you come down from Arsh, then you have skies. And the lowest sky is Sama'ud-Dunya, where there are stars, and then under that is Earth. 
So anything under Arsh, they understood. So Magala Ya Jabir in Hadhil Arba'a. The other four Arwahun Yusibuhal Yusibuhal Hadathan. The other four may sometimes make some mistakes, some problems can happen to them. Illa Ruh al Qudus, except the first one, Ruh al Qudus. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَلْهُ وَلَا تَلْعَبْ روح القدس never get heedless or never you know get busy with you know playing and game etc is always focused always with the truth this is one hadith the other hadith is that again in Al-Kafi but Instead of Jabir, it's Abu Basir, and instead of Imam Baghdad, it's Imam Sadiq. Abu Basir says, I ask Imam Sadiq السلام, about this ayah. وَكَذَلِكَ This ayah is Surah Shura number 52. Allah says that we have uh, sent down to you a ruhan min amrana. A spirit from our affair or our command. Ma kun tatadri mal kitabu wala iman. You didn't know what is the book and what is iman. So he says, I ask Imam to explain. Maybe the question was about ruh. What is this ruh here? Imam said, Khalqun min khalqillah tabarak wa ta'ala. This is a creation of cre among creatures of Allah. This is one of cre creature, uh, one creation, one creature. But أَعْظَمُ مِنْ جَبْرَائِيلِ وَمِيْكَائِيلِ Normally, many Muslims, you know, they think Ruh Al-Qudus is Jibra'il. Maybe sometimes even Sabshia. But we have hadith like this that says Ruh Al-Qudus is greater than Jibra'il. It's khalq, it's a creation. It's not, uh, you know, God or one of the three forms of deity but or, or you know like uh, three persons of course what they mean by three persons uh, is to be understood in a monotheistic way but in any case it's here very obvious that's creation and it's greater than Jibra'il and Mikail and of course he was, for example, Allah says to Isa, "Ayatuka beruh al Qudus." I supported you with Ruh al Qudus. Imam Ali Salam says, "Kana ma'a Rasul Allah yukhbiruhu wa yusaddidu." He, because this ayah was about the Prophet, so Imam doesn't talk about previous prophets. He talks about the Prophet and says, "Ruh al Qudus was with the Prophet and was informing him." And tasdeed. You remember once in uh, Hose Akhlaq series we talked about the difference between ta'id and tasdeed. So tasdeed means to make firm. So he was informing and making Rasulullah strong and firm. And Ruhul Qudus is also with the Imams. And even sometimes with Mu'mineen, for example, Imam alayhi salam said to Hisham ibn Hakam that that argument is what Ruh al-Qudus brought to your tongue. So Ruh al-Qudus is greater than Jibra'il and Mikail. But here Urafa have discussions and uh, just I mentioned one point. In the first hadith you saw that it says these five spirits are in Anbiya. And here it says Ma'a Rasulullah, it's with Rasulullah. So some people believe that Ruhul Qudus is indeed the spirit which is with the Prophet but from the Prophet. So it's like the light that Allah has created, Abba Luma Khalaq Allah, 
the first thing that Allah created is the light of the Prophet and it's aql and that light of the Prophet which is going to be with the Prophet as a human being that might be this spirit but of course there are different views and you know people may have different opinions but it's likely to say something like this uh, it's better we leave this to the uh, you know as scholars and we don't need to have any fixed position here we say whatever Allah knows we believe in that but the minimum is that we know that Ruhul Qudus is a creature a creation of Allah is a great one which is responsible for supporting for guiding for inspiring and if you like uh, I have a speech maybe one or two in the meeting with the Fukulara friends in UK about Holy Spirit and inshallah we can share with you I'm not sure if it is public but inshallah we can share with you we will then have a short uh, saying here from Imam Khomeini and he says Awliya uh, Allah that Allah has created with his both hands of Jamal and Jalal with both hands of beauty and you know bayadayya with my Allah said to Iblis that why you didn't do sajda to what I have created with my both hands both hands according to uh, Imam Khomeini is hand of beauty and hand of glory Jamal and Jalal so means both of them are in uh, human being and it's Khalifatullah وَدَرْ تَجَلِّيَ ذَاتِيَ أَوَّلِي بِجَمِيَ أَسْمَاءُ وَصِفَاتُ مَقَامِ أَحَدِيَّةِ جَمْ دَرْ مِرْآتِ كَامِلِ أَنْهَا ظُهُرْ نَمُدِهِ Allah has manifested primarily in the first place completely in their mirrors و تعلیم حقائق اسماء و صفات در خلوتگاه قیب حبیت فرموده so in maximum uh, uh, highness he has taught them his names and attributes and our hands are not enough long enough they are short to reach that and then he says that there is a hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Biharul Anwar and it says Aliyun mamsusun fi dhatillah Ali is maybe we can uh, tr uh, translate it in this way Ali has completely immersed in the essence of God what does it mean he says in my book Misbahul Hidayah you know Imam Khomeini has a book Misbahul Hidayah Fil Wilayat Wal Khilafa he says I have tried to explain this point about Nubuwa and Wilaya in that book but he says my example is example of a bat which wants to <laughs> describe sun you know bats normally live in darkness yeah they don't have even eyes to see they are in darkness they have some kind of radar so he says I am like a bat in darkness and I want to describe sun so I am not able to describe what is Khilafah of Khalafatullah uh, and then in the form of you know Velaya and Nubuwa but he says in that book I have tried to explain a little bit this concept and that is one of the best books of Imam Khomeini uh, that he talks about uh, the position of Velaya of Amirul Mu'minin and Khilafah of the Prophet and he has two Mishkat in that book one is about Elmi side of it and the other is about Aini side of it maybe sometime in future inshallah we can also review that book 
So we finished, alhamdulillah, this chapter also. What I would like to say at the end, and Imam Khomeini himself, you know, used to say a lot is, if someone doesn't believe in Irfan and in such mystical ideas, at least they should not reject it and deny it. And they should say, we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through denial, because we don't understand or we don't have experience, or maybe we have, you know, some, you know, kind of ideas against them, is not helping and it can block the way for understanding in future. Let us ask Allah to open our hearts and minds for the best of understanding, inshaAllah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.